uh, some thoughts on Jeremiah 14 and 15. Uh, Jeremiah was a great prophet of the Lord between 627 BC and 586 BC. Uh, the material in Jeremiah 14 and 15 would indicate that this, uh, uh, this portion probably comes towards the latter end of that period, although there's no specific marking of the time. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's get into the passage. Jeremiah is prophesying to Judah. Uh, he's prophesying to the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom, having been taken into captivity in 722 BC by the Assyrians. So here we are, and we will see in verses 6, 1 to 6, there is a drought or droughts. The judgment of God is being outworked in line with what the Lord had said in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 22. In the midst of those passages concerning what would happen to the nation of Israel if they rebelled against the Lord. And one of the problems, one of the difficulties, one of the afflictions they would have would be drought. And we see in verses 1 to 6, a drought had come or droughts had come and it was universally affecting the land and the people. And so we see a mourning, uh, we see a lamenting in verse 2. And her nobles are, 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 are looking for water in verse, verse 3. Um, the, whole, uh, uh, the whole passage is a passage of sadness. The farmers in verse 4 are ashamed. They cover their heads and it's uh, affecting uh, uh, the doe in verse 5, affecting the wild donkeys in verse 6. Uh, so it's a... Uh, uh, a very difficult time. And this leads uh, Jeremiah on behalf of the people, I suggest, in verses 7 to 9, uh, to seek to probe into the heart of the matter, which is the waywardness of the people, the rebellion of uh, the people. In verse 7, he'll talk about their backslidings being many. And he's turning to the Lord. He's using these great phrases in verse 8. O hope of Israel, uh, the saviour in time of trouble. And so, and so he truly is. And uh, there's this heart of turning back to the Lord. And yet then we're shocked when we come to verses 10 to 12, where the Lord says, no, no. He'll say, that, that verse 10, they've loved to wander thus. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Nor he, now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. You see. We should not take the grace of the Lord for granted. We should not take the grace of the Lord for granted. There comes a time when he will, as it were, say enough is enough. And he says to Jeremiah, shockingly, in verses 11 to 12, uh, about their prayers and their offerings, he says, don't pray. He says, don't bring your offerings, I'm not going to accept them. So these are shocking uh, statements. <sighs> we need to be very careful. Uh, to persist in the way of sin is a very, very dangerous thing. Let's go then to verses 13 to uh, 16. And here we'll see, it seems so Jeremiah is, is saying something along the lines that, well, they've been led badly. They've been led badly. He says in verse 13, but, uh, that the prophets say to them, you shall not see the sword, you shall not, you, 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 nor shall you have famine, but I will give you assured, I, I will, but I will give you assured peace in this place, as if everything's going to work out all right. Hear the prophets prophesying peace, peace, when there is uh, no peace. Uh, and the Lord agrees, uh, the Lord agrees that they have prophesied badly. Um, uh, it's the deceit of their own minds, end of verse 14. And the Lord says, I will bring judgment. I did not send them. And sword and famine shall... shall uh, they, they'd speak in verse... Uh, uh, well, let's read uh, the whole of uh, verse uh, verse 15. It says, Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets and who prophesy in my name, although I did not send them, and who say, Sword and famine shall not come upon this line. By sword and famine, those prophets shall be condemned. They shall face. Uh, they fall, shall face this trouble, uh, this uh, judgment. But then, the people also have to. The people also are going to be affected, and so we see the people will go 
into judgment. They'll be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem, victims of famine and sword. You see, the people cannot blame their leaders. They have to take responsibility themselves. Yes, the leaders may have, but the prophets may have prophesied badly, but they have, but they have to take responsibility for their own response to the to God. We cannot just blame our leaders. Well, we see then in verses 17 through to uh, 22, uh, Jeremiah's engagement with this whole uh, situation. And uh, uh, verse 17, we hear something of Jeremiah engaging with this all. He says, verse, six, uh, verse 18, if I go out into the field, behold, those pierced by the sword. If I enter the city, behold, the diseases of famine. Uh, and, and then the, the prophet and the priest ply their trade through the land, but have no knowledge. What a sad state, isn't it? Everything is hopeless. Everything is barren. And the leaders are no use. They have no knowledge. Oh, it just reminds us our leaders need to have knowledge of the ways of the Lord. And then he turns to the Lord in verses 19 to 22 with great pleadings. And... Uh, uh, he, he, asking the question in the middle of verse uh, 19 why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us we look for peace but no good came for a time of healing but behold terror again there's this acknowledging of wickedness the wickedness in verse uh, 19 verse 20 rather uh, and just working it all through and then verse 22 the, 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 the false gods can't do anything they can't do anything. Um, they, they can't change the situation. So we're not going to go to the false gods. Uh, are you not here, O oh Lord God? We set our hope on you, for you do all these things. It's, it's, it's a brilliant acknowledgement of the Lord. Uh, and, and it's as if it, it, Jeremiah comes to the height of his pleadings, but the Lord says no. You have these statements then in verses 1 to 9 of uh, chapter 15 which basically outworking the lord's uh, declaration uh, that he will not relent and that there will be judgment and so we see he, even if moses and samuel two great intercessors oh of course moses the great intercessor in exodus chapter 32 concerning the golden calf and the people's a predicament through their rebellion. Moses comes and pleads for the people. Samuel, go to 1 Samuel 7. You see um, uh, Samuel's uh, pleading for the feeding for the people. These two great men, even if the greatest of intercessors come, then the Lord says, I will change my mind. I will not be, I will not. Uh, yet my heart would not turn toward this people. Send them out of my sight. And then he goes through some of the some of the issues as regards to the different uh, judgments, pestilence, swords, famine, captivity. There, in verse, in in verse two, as destroyers in verse four, and he takes it back to Manasseh and how Manasseh, uh, although he repented at the end, you'll read in two Chronicles thirty three, I believe, he he sowed seeds of sin amongst the people which went deep and carried on and uh, oh what sadness and so here we see the outworkings uh, of this situation and we come and we see you rejected me verse 6 declares the Lord you keep going backwards so I have stretched out my hand against you and destroyed you you didn't want me so you will not have me. And that, that, that telling phrase, I think it's probably the most important phrase throughout uh, this whole passage. I am weary of relenting. End of verse 6. The Lord has had enough of holding back his judgment. Do not take the grace of the Lord for granted. There comes a time when he says, enough is enough. Talks about the widows. Verse seven, then uh, verse eight, I have made that uh, verse eight, uh, uh, verse uh, talks about the winnowing in verse seven and verse eight talks about the widows. I have made you more in number than in the than, than the sand of the seas. I have brought against the mothers of young men a destroyer at noonday. All sadness, all judgment, all 
well, such a, a miserable situation. So that's the verses 1 to 9 of chapter 15, cataloging uh, the miserable condition of the people and the law saying, you will have what you deserve. I will not hold back. Well, Jeremiah is overwhelmed by this. Jeremiah is overwhelmed by this. Uh, it, just, just to say, if you go to Revelation and chapter, uh, and chapter three and, and see the church at Sardis, uh, the Lord warned them uh, that he that he would remove their their lampstand if they did not repent. And um, we need to be very thoughtful about these situations concerning our uh, not being too complacent with the w w with the ways of sin. We need to be keeping short accounts with God. We never know where we can go if we allow sin to just flow out into our lives. Don't trust our own hearts. Don't trust our own selves. But if you go and go to Revelation and Revelation 2 to 3, you will also see at the end of the uh, letters to each of the churches, the statement, let him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. There may be general a general setting for uh, for judgment, even churches to be uh, removed and taken out of their place. But individuals can come back to the Lord. And that's what I believe is happening then in these last part of chapter uh, 15. And Jeremiah is, is then cast down in, verses, uh, in verse 10. Uh, and he's really... He's really in a in a in a difficult uh, situation. Uh, uh, I will make you serve your enemies. Uh, so we go to verses uh, thirteen and forty. Your wealth and your treasures I will give as spoil without price for all your sins throughout all your territory. I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. For in my anger a file is kindled that the, that shall burn forever. That's the situation. Uh, they uh, are, are in and now Jeremiah starts to 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 come before the Lord and he wants to he's, he's exercising himself as regards to the, th the the way that he has operated oh Lord we're in verse 15 here oh Lord you know remember me and visit me take take vengeance for me on my persecutors in your forbearance take me not away know that that for your sake i bear reproach and then he says about how the word of god had come to to him he says in verse 17 i did not sit in the company of revel as he had not gone along uh, with the way of the, of sin and he's, he's he's saying there verse 18 why is my pain unceasing my wound incurable refusing to be healed will you be to me like a deceitful brook like waters that fail his death. Jeremiah working it out, his own personal situation concerning what he's done. The Lord says to him, If you return, I'll restore you. You shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And here is Jeremiah then having this, this, as it were, assurance for the Lord in his situation. Uh, verse 20, And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. Here's a personal assurance. The people of God may be messed up and set for judgment, but individually we can know that the Lord is with us. What a precious statement, but I am with you. I am with you. We can know that ourselves as we can know the spirit of the Lord uh, uh, coming to us and comforting us. And the Lord with us, the Lord is our helper. And so finally, verse 21, I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of uh, the ruthless. Here's a promise to a faithful man amongst a faithless people that there's still grace for a faithful man. Even so, even amidst a situation where the people of God have despised the Lord's grace and he's given them up to judgment. And Jeremiah never did go to Babylon. Jeremiah was uh, in Egypt, 
he did not he was not taken away captive to Babylon. So that's some thoughts on Jeremiah and chapters fourteen and fifteen. And remember, don't take the grace of the Lord for granted. Thank you.